Budget PC gamers, this is the video for you. A couple of weeks ago, I reviewed AMD's new two core, four threaded APU, the 200GE, and we determined that it's actually a pretty good placeholder if you wanna eventually upgrade to a beefier Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7. Well, today, we're gonna be comparing the 200GE with the brand new 220GE and 240GE. Let's have a look. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna to be comparing and benchmarking all of AMD's new APUs, the Athlon 200GE, 220GE, and 240GE. And if you're new here and you wanna see more PC hardware benchmarking videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell, that way you never miss an episode. But before we get into it, let me quickly introduce the sponsor of today's video, Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is a 13 week class for all of you aspiring iOS and web developers out there. Their 13 week class focuses on providing you only the skills that you actually need to go out there and start your new career in coding, they don't waste time with a filler curriculum like at a traditional college. They also feature student housing at no extra cost, a variety of different classes, including UX design and QA testing, and most importantly, all of this is available at an affordable price. Head on down to that first link in the description to learn more if you're interested in getting that quick boost you need to start your new career in coding and design. All right, so instead of doing my normal introduction of the parts and the testing rig and all that, I think it would be better to benchmark these APUs in the beginning of this video, and then we'll talk about them afterwards, You'll see why that's a good idea in just a bit. So the first game up in our benchmarking run was Fortnite, and here in 720p with low settings and a 100% resolution skill, you can see that the 220GE and 240GE are doing a tiny bit better than the original 200GE, but these are all within margin of error in my opinion. Next up we have Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Thanks for all the comments telling me to leave this in my benchmarking runs by the way. And here in 1080p and low settings with FXAA, you can see that the 240GE is indeed a bit better, but still all three of these results are very close. PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds was up next, and for this one, I really had to crank down the settings all the way down to 720p and very low, and here we can actually see proper progression from the 200GE to the 240GE. Next up, I fired up the built-in benchmarking tool with Rainbow Six Siege, and in 720p and low settings with no anti-aliasing, the 220 and 240GE definitely performed better than the 200GE, but they were the exact same with each other. The Assassin's Creed Odyssey built-in benchmarking tool was up next. For this one, I also really had to crank the settings all the way down to 720p and very low settings settings, and here once again, all three of these APUs are within a margin of error. And finally, the last game in our benchmarking round was Rocket League, and in 1080p and performance quality and performance render settings, the 200GE actually beat the other two by one FPS, but once again, say it with me now, this was within a margin of error. So yeah, as you can see, all three of these APUs are performing pretty much the exact same, and I'm honestly not even convinced that these are different processors at all. For most of you, I kind of have a feeling that that's all the information that you needed from this video, so no hard feelings if you leave now, but for the rest of you, let's quickly go over some important information about these three APUs in case you were planning on picking one of these up. For specs, on paper, all of these APUs are the exact same with two cores and four threads, five compute units, two for the CPU and three for the GPU, and they're all rocking a TDP of 35 watts. The only difference between these is that the base clock of the 200GE is at 3.2 gigahertz, the 220GE is at 3.4 gigahertz, and finally the 240GE is at 3.5 gigahertz. So yeah, after seeing the specs on paper, it's pretty easy to determine that all three of these APUs are gonna perform the exact same. 100 megahertz isn't gonna make a big difference, if at all, but with that out of the way, we now have to talk about price. At the time of making this video, the 200GE is sitting on Amazon right now for 60 US dollars, the 220GE is five bucks more at $65, and the 240GE is $10 more than that coming in at $75. In my opinion, I wouldn't spend an extra dollar past the original 200GE because the performance just isn't there. If it were me and I actually wanted to buy one of these APUs, I would personally buy the 200GE and pair it with an MSI motherboard so you can overclock it a little bit, and you may even get better performance with that than a 240GE. With all that being said, however, I just want to emphasize what I said in my original 200GE video. These APUs do indeed have a legitimate use despite me trashing on them today. If you're looking to build a new PC in the AM4 socket but you're strapped for cash, it's not a terrible idea to buy one of these APUs and then upgrade later on down the line to a better Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7. By buying the APU now, now, you can then upgrade to a Ryzen 3000 series CPU later this year, or even the Ryzen 4000 series coming next year, and then you won't have to worry about upgrading your motherboard and your RAM like you normally would. Overall, I think it's safe to say that in my opinion, if you're interested in buying one of these APUs, I would really only recommend the original 200GE because the performance is almost just as good as the 240GE, but for $15 cheaper. With the 240GE coming in at $75, that's pretty darn close to a much more powerful Ryzen 3, so I just can't recommend 
recommend this. Well, that wraps up my review and comparison of AMD's kind of worthless new APUs. Now feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet and definitely hit that subscribe button because later next week I got another build guide for you guys. You don't want to miss that video.